Black, black America. I had a copy of this book in my library when I was in Boston in 2015. Reverend Kraft was visiting, and I just assumed he read the book. He did not. He sat down and read it in one sitting, and he said, Hallie, we got to put this book back in print. And when Reverend Kraft says, put something back in print, I take notice, and we did. And we didn't really sell many copies. Again, we're not we're a nonprofit, but we like to get the word out and it doesn't hurt to make a little profit here to keep us going. But when the riot started in May of 2020, we were selling like 50 or 60 copies a week all over the country, including Minneapolis and Seattle. And I would contact these people and I say, You're in our prayers, we feel sorry for you. So we have copies at ten dollars, they just got some hot off the press. Um, one of our uh, instructors uh, was a, he's since deceased, he was a pioneer in the homeschool movement, Sam Blumenfeld. He was a dear friend of mine and of Rev and Edis, and he wrote an essay or a newsletter back in June of 1986. It was called Eugenics in America, Education in the Making of a Black Underclass. And a friend of mine is just publishing a book, and she asked if she could reprint this. And I said, yes, and we're going to reprint it too. This goes into um, the racist roots of the IQ test and the white elite, the racist white elite that we're dealing with. And I want to mention this book here again. This Rev said this book could have been written yesterday. Some of the terminology is a little different. You don't use the term colored anymore, but um, not so much anymore. And Rev has a book uh, called Morality and Freedom that he wrote, I don't know, about 20, uh, 15 years ago. And it's a lot of it contains excerpts of state constitutions. So when these people say, oh, America's not a Christian nation, really? Just look at these state constitutions and tell me they weren't Christian nations. So without any further ado, I want to introduce uh, my dear friend, Reverend Stevie Kraft. We go back many years, I think, to 05 and 06 at a camp in Pennsylvania. Uh, Rev has a uh, degree from Harvard School of Divinity, and we, I kid people, don't let that, don't let that, uh, don't let that discourage you. He's a, he's our camp chaplain. He's a speaker of ours, and he's also an instructor at our camp. And he and his wife uh, live in Lexington, Massachusetts, where we don't own, but we manage a learning center just a few blocks from. Lexington Battle Green. We do have a guest room which is available from time to time and we'd love for you folks to come down. We're going to have some special events. Uh, Patriots Day, Patriots uh, the day before. We're going to have a video showing at the house and we're going to be at the reenactment where your, your late husband would never miss an event like that. So uh, let's give a nice warm hand to Reverend Stevie Kraft, my brother from another mother. From a show sure enough, another mother. That's all right. That's, that's my partner. That's my friend. How you all doing? Hey, Amen. I'm so honored to be here. I'm so, I'm so blessed to see Pastor Sam again. Last time I was here on Saturday uh, morning breakfast Bible study, that was such a blessing. And then I heard Pastor caught that COVID. But hey, listen, COVID-19 can't hold you down. That devil is a liar. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, who surely is King of kings and surely Lord of lords, Father, this is the day that you, that you and you alone have made. And we shall rejoice. Oh, yes, we shall rejoice. And we'll be exceedingly glad in this. And like the Patriot pastor would always say, and we're so honored to have his precious wife here with us tonight, we'll have no other king <laughs> but King Jesus. Hallelujah. So, Father, we ask, Lord, that you open our spiritual eyes this evening, that we may hear truth, for you are the way, you are the truth, you are the light. We may hear truth from your word concerning this wickedness called critical race theory, which is nothing more than crazy racial trash. And Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you'll open our spiritual ears, unclog the wax, the spiritual wax that keeps us deaf from hearing the word of the Lord. And above all, Lord Jesus, open our spiritual hearts. Take out the fallow ground. Open our spiritual hearts that once we see the truth and once we hear the truth, that then our hearts will cause us to obey. 
This is our prayer, Father. Lord, we also, according to your word, we bind the evil one. We bind Satan in the name of Jesus, according to your word, your word alone. For you said in your word, whatsoever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. So we bind the devil, who is the enemy of our souls, in the name of Jesus, that he cannot deceive anyone in the house tonight. And that, Father, when your word goes forth, it'll bring forth good fruit. For it is written in your word that you spoke in Matthew chapter 5, that you know a tree by the fruit that it bears. This is our prayer, Father. Your word declares that whatsoever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So loose the Holy Spirit to, to flow in this house tonight. I decrease so that you can increase in us. We'll be careful to give you the glory, all the honor and all the praise in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen brothers and sisters. We always start off with giving God glory by not always, we <coughs> always starting off in prayer and then reading of scripture pertaining to any issue that God wants to speak about. And this issue of critical race theory that so many of us have been caught in this spiral of, of, of evil that has caused not only division, but fear. God has not given us, brothers and sisters, a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. See, I've been aware of this long before they started calling it critical race theory. When I did my Master of Divinity down in Cambridge at Harvard Divinity School, they just called it critical theory because Harvard University, as all of you know, is very left-leaning. In fact, it's Marxist. And I graduated class in 96 with a Master of Divinity. That's been a long time ago. So it's, it's a hot mess now. Actually, a hot, hot mess. So I've been aware of the way these Ivy League schools do analysis. They do analysis using three criteria and three criteria only. Race, class, and gender. Race, class, and gender. Here we are in the 21st century, and they're still using not only Harvard, but now in corporate, in academia, in, 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 in education, and everywhere, the same three ways of doing analysis. They use class by dividing the rich from the poor in order to eliminate the middle class. They use gender by bringing forth and dividing men from women with some kind of nonsense called gender identity where they have people believing now that you can be a boy on Monday, a, a girl on Tuesday, and a combination of both on Wednesday. Hello, somebody! <laughs> and people are saying this mess with a straight face and believing it. And call you a racist and a bigot if you don't go along with it. Some of this stuff is so nonsensical that one must scratch one's head and say, wait a minute, are we living in some kind of twilight zone? I went and got a shirt not too long ago, a t-shirt. I'll, I'll tell you who gave me the idea and who made it up, my brother from another mother. You see what it says? Stop white hate, stop white self-loathing. You know what that means? It means stop taking a knee and apologizing for the fact that God so loved you that he is the master of diversity that he created all the races. Hello, somebody. <laughs> well, we want to talk about diversity and equity and inclusion. We need to go to the scriptures to see what that really means legitimately, not some nonsense coming out of Washington, D.C. Eh? God believes in diversity, but not this nonsense that they're pushing through our wicked government. Eh? God created the cultures. 
God created the, 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 the races. Eh? And everything that God does, the Bible says he does it perfectly. Eh? There is no error in him. He is the master. He is the creator. And he does all things well. But this mess today of using this nonsense called critical race theory, which in essence, I don't even call it that. I call it crazy, racist, trash. Say it with me, somebody. Crazy, racist, trash. Because that's what it is. It divides people based on skin color and flesh. And the Bible tells us to know no one after the flesh, but by the spirit. Dr. Martin Luther King says that he looked for the day that his children would not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. For God created all the cultures and all the races. And when we divide people based on something as superficial as flesh, what we're saying in essence is, that's a slap in God's face. What we're saying in essence is, God, you made a mistake. Whether it's white racists that say you made a mistake by creating black folks, or the reverse of that, by saying, God, you made a mistake by creating white folks. Hello, somebody. It's the same lie, just reversed. See, so we have to start off understanding that this mess coming out the gate is a lie. Eh? Critical race theory comes up with the notion, which is a lie straight out the pits of hell, that says if you're born with white skin, you're automatically a racist whether you know it or not. Just because your skin is white. Huh? You are an oppressor, they say, of these poor black folks and these minorities. And if you're black, they tell you just the opposite. You're oppressed, you poor than you. You can't do a thing for yourself because these white folks got their foot on your neck. It's an insult. It's an insult to Caucasians and it's an insult to African Americans. But that's what the devil uses through the Marxist Communist Party in order to divide and conquer. That's all it is. Because all one has to do, my brothers and sisters, is ask oneself as what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, that if you want to know what kind of tree you got, examine the fruit. You know a tree, Jesus says, by the fruit that it bears. Eh? If I go out here and look at a beautiful tree, and I ask somebody, what kind of tree is that? And they say, Rev, that's an apple tree. Cool. And then I say, well, I got a taste for an a good sweet apple. I'm going to go out there and do some apple hunt picking. And then I get to the tree, and there's peaches on it. We got a problem. <laughs> there's a problem. Because you told me, sir, it was an apple tree. So how is it that when I get out there, I find peaches? There's a liar in the house somewhere. So let's see what God says about this crazy racial trash nonsense. And this is just one scripture. There's many more. But for the sake of time, I'm going to give you just one. We all know that God is love. We hear that all the time. God is love, and yes, he is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Because God loved us, that's why we love him. And he whosoever says that they love God, who they've never seen, yet hate their brothers, who they see every day, are liars, and the truth is not in them. Eh? So let's just take one passage from the book of wisdom, which is the book of Proverbs, who wrote the book of Proverbs, uh, uh, King Solomon, who was not a preacher, he was a politician. 
the wisest, most richest politician that ever lived. And let's see what he says in chapter 6 of Proverbs. He says, starting in verse 20, uh, 16, these six things the Lord hates. Oh, I didn't know the Lord hated some stuff. Yes, he does. He don't love everything. Eh? He says, yes, seven are an abomination to him. One, a proud look. Two, a lying tongue. Three, hands that shed innocent blood. Four, a heart that devises wicked plans. Five, feet that are swift in running to evil. Six, a false witness which speaks lies. And seven, one who sows discord among the brethren. Communists, Marxists, critical race theory and critical race trash are guilty of every one of them. Every, all seven of them. There is no truth in none of that madness. It is nothing more, my brothers and sisters, than sin. S-I-N. The S word. And I get so frustrated as a preacher of the gospel to have to listen to these mealy mouth preachers that won't even preach the uncompromising gospel of sin and salvation. I'm sick of them. They need to go and do something else because God has not called any minister to stand up in, a, in behind a holy desk and preach nonsense and preach foolishness and preach these ear-tickling sermons when all through the Bible, the Bible tells you to preach salvation and the Bible tells you to preach against sin. For there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. People say, oh, Reverend Craft, you want them hellfire and brimstone preachers. Correct. Because <laughs> anytime I get, get beside myself with a proud look and think I know more than the writers of the Bible, anytime I get beside myself and think I know more about spiritual reality than Jesus, and Jesus preached hellfire and brimstone. It's nonsense about all these cute sermons and walking through the, the air tickling mess while people are dying and going straight to hell every day. We got a mess in our nation, a hot mess. And it's time now for preachers that are going to stand up uh, as the prophet stood up and declare to a wicked and perverse generation, thus saith the Lord. Anything less than that is false. If hell and heaven does not exist, then I would give up my clergy uh, a calling. I'll give up my Christianity and go dig ditches somewhere. But this Bible does not change. And God's word is eternal from everlasting to everlasting. And God said that he's not willing that any should perish. But that all will come to repentance. Uh, so God is looking for preachers that are going to stand up and do what the Apostle Paul told us all to do. Preach the whole counsel of God and the whole counsel of God means exactly that that there is a heaven to gain and a sure enough uh, a hell to shun that's the gospel Jesus was born of, of a virgin lived a perfect life without sin came to give us an example that we could see touch and feel we can get on a plane and go to Israel tonight even though with COVID and everything else uh, and stand right there and see the empty tomb he lived a perfect life uh, he died a horrible death on that old rugged cross uh, but death could not hold him uh, for he rose from the dead on the third day uh, and over 500 saw him uh, and then he went back to heaven and seated at the right hand of God the Father and all who believe in that simple gospel message the Bible says heaven is your eternal inheritance that's the gospel 
That's the gospel. Not this nonsense about all this cute talk. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. And any preacher that's not preaching that, the Apostle Paul said in the book of Galatians, if anyone comes with any other gospel than the gospel that, that Paul preached, it is a cursed message. It's cursed. God's not in it. And I, my heart bleeds, especially as I look at you young people, because the devil is determined to pervert your mind, you young people, with all kind of lying wonders, telling you all kind of crazy stuff. I'm 78 years old. When I was your age, if somebody had told me that boys can think they girls, and if they think they girls, they are girls. Just, uh, what? You out of your mind. That's crazy. That woman right now, Jackson, who's being grilled for, uh, to, to be uh, 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 on the Supreme Court. They asked her the question, what's a woman? I don't know. What? You gonna be on the Supreme Court? You can't figure that out? No, she knows what, that, she knows what a woman is. If I'd have been there, I'd have said, you don't know what a woman is. is. Really? Judge Jackson? Tell me, who are you? See, I'd have lit her up. Who are you? No, she gave the political correct answer. Because she wasn't going to get put in the box. Because her record has already betrayed her as being tra a transgender, uh, believing in that foolishness. Transgender. There ain't no such thing as that. You male or you female? Well, like Reverend Kraft, you need to follow the science. Right. And the science is X, 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 Y. End of discussion. No nonsense about what? It ain't about biology. It's about how you feel. What? How you feel? If I'm born male, how in God's name am I supposed to feel like a woman? The whole idea is pure nonsense, but it's evil nonsense. So what I'm going to do now, uh, Brother Noah, bring me up some uh, on, these, on these screens. Bring me up, uh, yeah, I'm going to give you a little test. And I know you're all going to pass it. You're all going to ace this test because it's just common sense. Here's the test. Are you a racist? There's this woman that just put out this book not too long ago. Her last name is D'Angelo. D'Angelo is D'Angelo. I forgot her first name. She wrote this book called White Fragility. Any of you familiar with that book? Well, you're not. She's a white woman. She wrote this book called White Fragility. Saying, oh, I'm white, which she is. She got rich off this book. And she's condemning her own self. She's saying, us white folks, even when we don't think we're racist, we're really racist, subconsciously. Now, what kind of nonsense is that? You white, you Caucasian, God created you white, just like he created me black. I've been black 78 years, and I don't think I'll turn white no time soon. But what would I look like telling somebody that I'm oppressed because I'm black and I don't realize it? But these people are putting out these lies of saying, wait a minute, Rev. Those of you that have grandkids or children, younger children, your grandchild, say your grandchild is just a toddler. And he's white, because most of you in here are Caucasian. You're going to look at that little grandchild, little cute grandchild, and say, you're an oppressor. Or worse than that, you go down to Salvation Army somewhere and find some Caucasian that's sleeping under the bridge and goes to the Salvation Army to get three meals. He's an oppressor 
based on his skin color. But then flip the script and look at somebody like LeBron James or Oprah Winfrey. She's a, million, a billionaire. She's oppressed. So let's reason together, y'all. That old boy under the bridge, because his skin is white, is oppressing Oprah Winfrey, who is a black woman billionaire. If you buy that story, I got five bridges in Brooklyn, I'll say you tonight, and I don't even live in Brooklyn. That's just how nonsensical this mess is. Because eh? the truth of the matter is we have white people that are rich. We have white people that are middle class. We have white people that are working class. And we have white people that are underclass. Conversely, we have the same in the black community. We have black billionaires, black multimillionaires, black millionaires, black middle class, black working class, and a black underclass. But the communists can't have that. They gotta divide the people based on flesh. Yet the Lord says, no, no one after the flesh. No one. So the minute you start hearing anybody play the race card, shut them down. We have to grow a spiritual spine that instead of apologizing for how God created us, we have to go at these lying devils with the truth. When they call you a, a subconscious racist, you got to come at them and say, if I'm a subconscious racist, you're a conscious pedophile. Because that's what most of them are. Eh? Don't sit there and listen to that nonsense. No. Because the truth will always stand investigation. Because the truth needs no defending. But this political correct nonsense, this cancel culture nonsense is killing our nation and it's binding up people from speaking the truth. I'll just read to you just a, just a little bit on some of the material that I pulled on critical race theory. I'm only going to read this little part here. Critical race theory, or as I call it, crazy racial trash, is a radical ideology asserting that races can be put into different categories. White people are the oppressor, and black people and minorities are the oppressed. Critical race theory is postmodernist that pins races against each other. Critical race theory also asserts that America was founded on racism and slavery, as well as that any attempt to end racism in America, such as the Brown versus Board uh, 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 decree, is just an attempt to maintain white supremacy. Many parents have rightfully protested against critical race theory being taught in the schools. Let's stop right there. You always hear this, this, this phrase, white supremacy. Let me tell you something about that. Next time somebody comes to you, these leftists come to you, and say that white supremacy, America is ir irredeemably racist because of white supremacy and so-called white superiority, ask them one question. You believe in white supremacy, ask them. They'll say, oh yes, America is a white supremacist nation from its founding and beginning. Okay, then if you believe in white supremacy, you must also believe in its polar opposite. 
Well, what do you mean, Reverend? You heard me. I'm not talking to you in, in, in Greek. If you believe in white supremacy and that America is a white supremacist nation and cannot be redeemed, then you believe in its opposite, which is black inferiority. Did you get what I just said? Because if you have an effect, you got to have a cause. And if you have a cause, you automatically get an effect. One can't say, oh, I believe America is inherently racist and believe neighbor in Americans were, is built on white supremacy without believing its opposite. Then you must also believe, you tell them, in black inferiority and then nail them between the eyes and say, do you believe in black inferiority? Guess what? They won't say yes. You've painted them right into a corner because lies will always unravel. They can't say they believe in white supremacy while denying its opposite black inferiority. Do you get what I just told you? Are you sure? Okay. So the next time these liberals come to you with that nonsense, that America is irredeemably white supremacist because they are oppressing these poor blacks who some of them are billionaires. Then you ask them, well, I guess then uh, all these black scholars and black billionaires and black millionaires are inferior. Do you believe that? And of course they're going to say no. Then you say, well, you lied then. Because you can't have one without the other. That right there, I guarantee you, if you drop that on them, they're out of your face. And if I say nothing more to you tonight, purpose in your hearts tonight, brothers and sisters, that you will no longer let the devil bring you into a spirit of capitulation and a spirit of fear to go along with that nonsense. Push back. Amen. You hear me? Amen. And push back, not with emotion. Push back with truth. So now I'm going to give you an example. Next slide, Noah. These are the credits. This is where I got this material from uh, Joseph Conti, Brad Stetson, and Stan uh, Farina. Uh, in bold, you'll see up there black and, and right, the bold new voice of black conservatives in America. They took many black conservatives and set up a book, that book there, Black and Right, and gave us uh, three page essays. I had nestling in there. So I contacted these guys and asked them, could I uh, use uh, their material? And of course, they said, yeah, Reverend Kraft, have at it. So uh, I'm giving them their due. Next slide. <laughs> Question one, there's five questions. True or false, you guys? Only whites can be racist. True or false? <laughs> right. Next slide. Here's the facts. Only white people, this is what first the left says. Only people in power can be racist. That's what they say. Therefore, whites who are the power brokers can be racist, only can be racist. That's a lie. Because you have a lot of black people in power as well. Obviously not as many as whites because whites are the majority. But this idea that only whites can be racist because only whites are the power brokers, that doesn't even make sense in the natural. You mean to tell me somebody like Oprah Winfrey or LeBron James or some of these black millionaires are not power brokers? Doesn't even make sense. No. 
Racism always has existed across the board because all racism is, is one set of culture thinking that they are better than another set based on something as stupid and superficial as skin color. When the truth of the matter is, that's nothing more than sin, just like any other sin. It's what God, what I read to you, God hates a proud look. God hates it. I'm better than you. Say what? How how you figure that, turkey? Oh, cause my skin is light and yours is dark. Oh, well guess what, turkey? Guess what we're gonna agree on? We're both going to die and go back to dust. And guess what color dust is? It's gray. <laughs> it's kind of hard for me to read from here, but a couple examples, you know what? Okay, yeah, I can probably read it better than me. Reginald Denny, a truck driver, almost was beaten to death in 1992. A lot of you young people wouldn't even lie there. In the Los Angeles riots. Denny was white. And the families of the murdered victims of Colin Ferguson, who was black, on a New York commuter train, know full well that African Americans, like all human beings, can be racist. First, it was white racism against black people in my generation in the 40s and 50s when I was coming up because of overt racism under the Jim Crow laws. So there's a spiritual principle here. The Bible teaches in Galatians chapter 5 that whatever we sow or put out, we reap. It comes back on us. What goes around comes around. So what has happened, because in the 50s and 60s, Jim Crow had the white people oppressing the black people under the law. Now the black people are oppressing the white people under the law. Huh? Tweedly D did it to Tweedly Dumb. Now Tweedly Dumb is doing it to Tweedly D. Sin is the problem. It always has been. Eh? The next point. Jesse Peterson, who is black, but he's a good guy. <clears throat> he lives out in the hood in Watts, but he started a, a ministry to the gangbangers in Watts. He's a community activist, he's on our side, who helped troubled black youth grow into mature men. He says that racism among black teens and teenagers is most tragically underreported today. And he gives an example. A black gang member once told Peterson, I think he knew the most he, a crip or a blood, I'm not sure which one it was. Because I've met him through John Burke's side. You, you know him well. He said a black gang member once told him that he, this black gang member, refuses to learn anything from one of his teachers because the teacher was white. The, the gang member said, I hate all white people. Does that sound racist to y'all? Of course it does. Black children that think like this are only hurting themselves and yet they don't even know it. Yeah. Huh? Think about that, y'all. They don't even know it. Racism is an evil. And it's not just relegated to people with fair skin. It comes from the heart and then goes to the mind to make one culture, whether the culture is black doing it to white people or whether the culture is white doing it to black people. Racism is an evil. Human beings are capable of great and redemptive acts, but the record of history makes it undeniable that we are also capable of great evil. <clears throat> Ain't no such thing as one race is good and another race is bad. One race are oppressors due to no, nothing they can do about it. And the other group is oppressed, nothing they can do about that. Anybody that goes along with that nonsense is crazy. Here's the action point. Guard your heart. Guard your mind. And if you don't do that, you will enter into the poison quicksand of racial and animosity, which rends, which means tears, our nation and perpetuates.
perpetuates an ugly part of human nature. The other part, the ugly part, brothers and sisters, of human nature is the S word. S I N. Sin. Any problem that we experience in our country is a spiritual problem at the root. It may play out politically, like what the communists are doing with this crazy racial trash nonsense, but all problems that stem from evil is because of sin, and only the church has the right answer to these, this mess. Because problems are spiritual at their root. They play out politically, they play out economically, but they're spiritual at their root. Next, uh, no, next slide. Question number two. Institutional racism so permeates American society that it hardly matters if African Americans and other minorities try to succeed, since the effects of discrimination inevitably shut them out of the job market. True or false? False. You're doing good, guys. <laughs> Next slide. Noah. The fact. First, what the left says. No matter how well you do in school or college, you will not get a job because you are black. That's false. Then you got this jive rapper, Chuck D. <laughs> this guy's a millionaire, and all he does is spout profanity and talk crazy talk. He's black, if you don't know that. He says, and many, him and many other mainstream minority leaders commonly teach this notion to young and upcoming black youth. The, the Department of Labor brought forth these statistics that show that for every significant level of education that is accomplished by 25 to 34 year old blacks, the percent unemployment drops by one half. And during the period of 1973 to 1994, the current dollar revenues of the top 100 black owned industrial firms as listed by Black Enterprise Magazine increased from 473 million to 6.7 billion. Does that sound like black folks are all oppressed to you? Yet why you don't hear that on the mainstream media? They want white people to think that all, all blacks are getting well fed and living hand to mouth and criminals because they set the narrative, and the narrative is a lie. In fact, black people in America live better than black people anywhere else on planet Earth. Did you all know that? That's the truth. And I'll tell you something else before we go to the next slide. When you hear this nonsense about America is irredeemably racist and has to be fixed, the only reason the communists push that narrative is because they want to destroy America in a race war and then replace our government of freedom and the opportunity for everybody to replace it with a wicked communist government to destroy us because they are the enemies of God and they're the enemies of our nation. And think about this, y'all. If America, here's another common sense point that you can't miss. If America is irredeemably racist, as they tell you it is, which is a lie, then why is it that every time Dick and Harry is trying to get in America to go corporate? I don't see nobody trying to bounce out of America. Who in their right mind would try to get in a country that's really racist? Maybe one group of people anywhere at any time that's trying to get out of America. No. What we see is just the opposite. They are all trying to get in here. <clears throat> and yet we're going along with the okie doke that America is racist. Do we have racist people in America of all colors? The answer to that is yes. Because racism is a spiritual problem. But is the nation of America racist? The answer is no. What's the this part?
hardly sounds like the profile of a systemically racist and anti-black nation. Shelby Steele, he's a good guy, he's black. He authored the book Content, excuse me, Content of Our Character. He says, quote, I believe that it is time for blacks to begin to shift from a wartime to a peacetime identity, from fighting for opportunity to the seizing of it. Eh? What's he saying there? He's saying a minority of blacks understand that they could not achieve anything like they have achieved in, a, in any place else in the world except in America. That's why they're billionaires and millionaires and, and doctors and lawyers and everything else. They know that, but yet they want to they wanna keep other blacks poor, broke, mad, unforgiving, with an attitude. That's why Steele, Shelley Steele says, it's time to move from a war time, which means all is up in somebody's face, with an attitude, and full of unforgiveness, and resentment, based on what happened in slavery 200 years ago. Forget that. God says you're black folks, your unforgiving spirit, your resentment, your hatred for your brother, while you sit up in church every week, black folks have a higher rate of church attendance than white people. Yet they sit up there with holy hands and talk about, oh, how I love Jesus, but I just hate them white people. <laughs> the Bible says you're a liar and the truth is not in you. God says it's time, black people, to get the chip off your shoulder. Come out of that wartime, unforgiving, resentful, hateful spirit. That's why I came up with this shirt from Howard. Time for Caucasians to poop push back. The action step for you guys. Let civil discourse be based on facts. Even when the facts show that racism is institutionally and socially weak. Do you know that the races, for the most part, were getting together just fine until Obama got in there? Do you know that? And who voted him to get in there? It sure wasn't black folks. Wasn't enough of us. It was you all. Because of the goodness of Caucasians, who wanted to make amends for slavery and Jim Crow, it was the white people of good heart that says, let's vote for him. Because he lied to them and told them that he was gonna be a reconciler of races. What that rascal do? Soon as he got in there, he started the mess. Soon as he got in there, don't raise your hands, but I know some of you in 2008 voted for him because you thought that he was going to be good for the nation. You found out different. Next slide, Noah. Question number three. True or false? When welfare critics talk about straightening out the welfare system, they are secretly, key term, expressing racist attitudes toward poor minorities. True or false, y'all? Huh? True or false? I don't hear you. Correct. Next slide. If you, this is what the racists say, if you criticize welfare programs or expect certain behavior from those on welfare, you are a racist. That's a lie. Robert Woodson, he's a good guy. He's on our side. He's black. He's a black neighborhood activist down in Washington, D.C. He argues that the welfare system literally rides on the black, on the backs of the black poor. Not the black working class, not the black middle class, not the black rich, but the black poor. You know why they attack and why they use the black poor? Because they know that they gotta keep black poor people poor. 
We call them race hustlers, or I call them race pimps. That's your Al Sharpton boys. And some of these professors, eh? Some of these wicked Marxist black professors at Harvard and Duke, eh? And Cornell, you know? I, like, uh, I used to get some of their faces. How is it that you, a black professor, got the way you got to by using the capitalist free enterprise system and you got the audacity to say that white folks are oppressing you? Man, you a liar and the truth's not in you. How do you get up there? But yet you're going to sell other blacks who want to make some of their life that they can't do it just because they're below you? No, you want to keep them poor so that you can keep making money. That's why Sharpton gets, he's not just one, there's many, many of them. He's just one of them. Eh? But that's how they, that's their income. That's how they stay rich. By keeping poor blacks poor. Second bullet, the black family has been hit hard by welfare. One example is that in order to qualify for the largest welfare package, for families with dependent children, the black woman must be unmarried. What is that? Uh huh. This has resulted in a tragic set of social dynamics in the black community. Social scientist George Gilder, who is white, has pointed this out, which is a chief cause of black poverty. All we have to do is do our research, y'all. And we quickly discover that single parent families by single mothers raising kids is a direct route and a direct road to poverty. So if the system, the communist system that has infiltrated all of America really wanted to help these poor, oppressed minorities, then why are they separating the man from the woman in the house? Welfare policies in and of themselves are not racist. For example, half of the children born in Sweden, and we all know that ain't no blacks living that much in Sweden. <laughs> but they have, they have a lot of welfare. Half of the children born in Sweden are the result of unwed pregnancies because of the healthy, hefty welfare packages presented in that country. So when you, when you hear this story, especially with young people, that are hearing this lie about we want uh, socialism, like they do over in the Scandinavian countries. Because that's going to be a better system than free enterprise. That's a lie from hell if you think it through. Ain't no such thing as free. Ain't nothing free. Because these people in these Western European countries that get all this welfare, where do you think that money comes from? Government doesn't have any money. Those people work a job and they take 60, 70% of their income in taxes. And in hardcore communist countries, see that's soft communism, soft socialism in those Scandinavian countries like Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland. But there's no such thing as socialism is better than free enterprise, com or capitalism. Because everybody who succeeds economically, they succeed economically under the free enterprise system. No country, nowhere succeeds or has ever succeeded under communism. You can't find one because they don't exist. Your action plan for this slide. Keep speaking, and I already said this, keep speaking out against the welfare system as it leads to family dissolution and hurts those who are involved in it. The best thing you can do for poor people who are in the underclass, whether they're black or white or polka dot, is encourage them to get a train, basically a, a trade, better than going to these universities. 
Because going to these universities, they're controlled by Marxist professors who are going to tell you this CRT nonsense. And you're going to come out living in your parents' basement with, with student debt and end up working at Mickey D's with a bachelor's degree. Yet they're not pushing the blue collar trades. Plumbers make $30, $40 an hour. Electricians, big money. Why aren't they pushing, if they, they're so interested in economic security, why aren't they pushing the trade, the blue collar trades? <clears throat> no, they want you to go to college so that they can indoctrinate you with some nonsense and then put you in debt and had you living in mama's basement. Next, Noah. Question four, we're almost at the end, y'all. You're doing well. True or false? Statistical disparities between whites and minorities are indicative of racism. True or false, y'all? False. False. Boy, you guys are good. You must, you must have already knew where I was coming with this. <laughs> Next slide, Noah. The facts. First, what the left says. Proportionalism states that racism is the cause for various differences of status and income. That's a lie. First bullet. When the Civil Rights Division, term coined by Thomas Sowell, automatically identifies racial discrimination as the root cause of income differences, it ignores other critical factors. What he's saying here is, Income differences have nothing to do with racism. Then he tells you in the second bullet why that's so. While it is a fact that black PhDs earn less than white PhDs, racism is not the reason. You're not going to hear that. The reason is most black PhDs are in non-lucrative fields such as education, while white PhDs are in the fields of engineering, computer science and mathematics. Think about that. So if I'm a PhD and I, I have a PhD in, in, in social sciences or in education, and one of you Caucasian brothers or sisters have a PhD in STEM, yeah, in the sciences or technology or mathematics, we both have PhDs, but obviously you're gonna make more than I do. So if you're a surgeon, and I'm, I'm a social scientist, a sociologist, how in God's name am I supposed to make the same thing that you make and then call it equity? That's like me saying, oh, I didn't go to school at all. I just have a high school degree, a diploma, and I'm a custodian. There's nothing wrong with being a custodian. But whatever job you do or whatever career you have, be the best at it. So I'm a custodian, and I make $10 an hour, but you a surgeon. <laughs> I'm supposed to make what you make. That is nonsense. But the race hustlers will tell you, <laughs> it ain't about equality, Reverend, of opportunity. It's about equity. Everybody got to be on the same playing field. We got to have a fair wage. What in God's name is a fair wage? When there's people all over the world that live off of $20 a month, if they get that. A fair wage. How do you define a fair wage? If I'm a surgeon and you're a custodian, you getting paid according to your skill set, and I'm getting paid according to mine. Your action plan. Rewards accrue to those who invest, keyword, in education, in technical knowledge, experience, discipline, and diligence for themselves. They do not approve to those whose skin tones match the line on a color bar. Eh? So if I'm a black physician 
And there are many of them out there, a black surgeon. Let's take, for example, Dr. Ben Carson, who you all know well. He could, grew up in the hood, as you all know. Didn't have no daddy in the house, as you all know. Had a mama who couldn't even read, but he didn't know she couldn't read. And she would tell him, Right, read this book, and then I'm going to test you on it. She couldn't read a lick. She was illiterate. But she had God's wisdom. And Ben had an attitude on steroids because he grew up in a wicked, negative, hate-filled, unforgiving environment in the ghetto. And he would go off. He had so much anger in him. One time he almost stabbed somebody, and if he'd have done that, he wouldn't have been the brain surgeon that he became, or the, the secretary of, of, of HUD. He went at the guy with a shank, and the only thing that, that stopped him from stabbing the guy to death was a big uh, belt buckle the guy had on when he went to stab him. And then the Lord got hold of him, and he knew that he had to change and get rid of his anger. And his mother would make him read and then give her a report. And she couldn't read a lick. But she had wisdom and she was illiterate. Well, we all know the end of the story. He became a brain surgeon. Black man with a single parent mother, no daddy, living in the hood. And he was one of the most renowned surgeons, brain, a neurosurgeon that ever existed on planet Earth. Literally separated two Siamese twins who was joined together at the head. Ben Carson. There's nonsense about it. he's oppressed. What kind of nonsense is that? Next, uh, next slide. Last question, true or false? Only persons of a certain race or ethnicity ought to speak about issues related to that race or ethnicity. True or false? false. Correct. Guess what, guys? You aced this thing. <laughs> Every one of you aced it. Don't raise your hand if any of you in here had a different opinion. Don't embarrass yourself. Don't tell Reverend Craig. <laughs> Every one of those ideas were false. Every one of them. But every one of you have heard every one of those arguments. And some of you have believed them. And I came here tonight to knock them lies in the head as a black man. Okay? Put up the next, uh, the truth. There's a t-shirt, some of you have heard this model, that the, Marx, that the, Mar the black Marxists put out. It says, oh, crow, it's a black fat. They don't say thing, but they say fat. They got their own language, it's called black, black, uh, uh, black, uh, black, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> black English, what kind of nonsense is that? English is English! <laughs> the t-shirt model is a black fat. You wouldn't understand if your white folks didn't make you shut up. Why you don't hear nobody say that it's opposite? Why you don't tell me? Craft is a white thing. You wouldn't understand. What's good for the goose is always good for the gander. Uh-huh. If, if it's a black thing and you folks won't understand, then you have the right to tell me it's a white thing, Craft. You won't understand. We got a black congressional congress and all of them are communists sitting up there in Washington. Why we don't have a white congressional congress? Huh? We got black leaders. Red Crab, take me to your leader. My leader's in heaven. Where's your white leaders? I don't hear nobody saying, white man, take me to your leader. The black folks supposed to have a leader. But the young leader, think for yourself. They want you to tell you what to think. When God says you better learn how to think. 
The model above calls into question the possibility of participatory democracy itself as it implies that only blacks can deliberate, deliberate and comment on issues affecting blacks. See, that shuts you all down. These black Marxists who push that it's a black thing, you wouldn't understand. What they're literally doing is pulling, pulling uh, p political correctness on you to muzzle you to shut you up. That's all that is. Next time you hear anybody tell you that, when you confront them with some of this nonsense, they know what you do, you push back on them, and you come just the opposite, just like I told you about white supremacy versus black inferiority, then you flip the script on them and come with just the opposite. You tell them, oh, I won't understand because it's a black thing. Well, guess what, Turkey? <laughs> it's a white thing. You won't understand. Tell them that, and you'll have a fight on your hands. <laughs> but it's the truth. Because for every lie, the truth will shut it down. And if you don't learn anything else tonight from these slides in this presentation, learn this. You have to push back. And you have to stop being afraid and fearful and putting up with this nonsense. No group, second bullet, no group exists in a social vacuum completely isolated from all others, as individuals and as members of society, our destinies are quite, are tightly intertwined. Correct? Because what happens to you happens to me. What happens to me happens to you. That's why God tells us, if we are born and citizens of the greatest nation on planet Earth other than Israel, succeeded in. They got it here in America. Their agenda is not to leave if they, really, if they think America is so wicked. Their agenda is to destroy America. And then build a false uh, ideology called communism. Last bullet. The myth of color-coordinated thinking is maintained to serve the ends of quote-unquote rights and advocacy groups. In contrast to this, most black conservatives insist with Dr. King that people be judged on inward qualities, not outward ones. In other words, there are rich white people 
and righteous white people. There are wicked black people and righteous black people. End of discussion. And anybody who denies that is crazy or wicked themselves. The Bible is clear on this subject. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and come short of God's glory, and that there is none righteous, no, not one. You know, such thing as good people of one skin color and bad people of another, they don't even sound right. Persons of all backgrounds are supposed to reflect and cooperate in common government for common ends. That's why I just have been saying to you all, we are Americans. And we should be proud of the fact that we have been born in America as American citizens. We didn't choose to be born in America. We could have been born in Ukraine or Afghanistan or Africa or Calcutta, India. God chose, he ordained us to be born in the greatest nation on the planet Earth. And the devil who comes only to steal, kill, and destroy wants to put in our minds a lie from the pits of hell and then call it critical race theory. When the truth of the matter is, y'all, it's crazy, it's racist, and it's trash. You're actually going. This is the kind of government that in Lincoln, or Abraham Lincoln, in Lincoln's words, is of the people, you see that in our Constitution, by the people, and for the people. Because we are more alike than we are different, more human than we are racial. Of the people, by the people, and for the people. The Constitution does not say, of the white man, for the white man, by the white man. And it doesn't say for the black man, of the black man, it says the people. Therefore, we are obligated to mutually reflect on the full range of social issues, including those that uniquely affect other races. That's why I do these presentations. And in closing, what God it's put in my heart. I shared it, kind of shared it with Noah upstairs. Noah, hit that last slide. It's not a, it's not a, a it's, it's a Q&A. But as we round this up, if anyone has anything they want to ask Reverend Kraft, just raise your hand, I'll acknowledge you. And if I have the answer, I'll, I'll share, you give your name, stand up, raise your hand, stand up, ask your question. And uh, I'll answer it if I don't know the answer. I'll tell you I don't know. But if I do know, y'all get your ball. I'll say, but I shared with Noah up in the sound booth, and I'll share it with you all. God has placed in my heart, and placed in my wife's heart, we have a house church in uh, Lexington where the battle for liberty actually began in Lexington, Massachusetts. Right now, the devil has Lexington, his claws around that city's throat. The city is very far to the left. But the devil is a liar because Lexington, Massachusetts has a rich history. The actual revolution for liberty kicked off right there. And I told Satan, you're not, you're not, you're not keeping Lexington because Lexington's true heritage is freedom not Marxism, freedom, Lexington. That's why when people say, oh, Lexington, oh, that place is wicked. Yeah, well, tell me one place on planet Earth that's not. Okay? Right? But Lexington has the history of the revolution for freedom. And I refuse to let the devil keep it. I'm going to do everything within my power to do these seminars, not only there, but every door that God opens for me and what God has put in my heart and every opportunity I get to speak somewhere, I share this need. I don't know if any of you know anybody that has a motor home, not a trailer, 
uh, camper that you pull behind a truck, but a, a motorized motorhome, a small one, a B or a C. Because God has put it in my heart, my wife's heart, to take these seminars out of the four walls of 177 Waltham, which is our address in Lexington, and take this message all through Massachusetts, then all through New England, and then outward. And the reason why we need that motor home is because if Satan tries to shut down air travel, where you have to have a shot and five masks on your face and a passport with four boosters to get on an airplane, that ain't gonna happen with Reverend Crabb. Because a motorhome is a home on wheels, as you all know. And I refuse to stop your blessed pastor, Pastor Sam. He said, Rev, you need to expand. And that touched my heart because I know that's true. He confirmed what I know in my heart. So I'm laying it out to you every place I speak. We've been getting quite a few local invitations. But every place I speak, God says, tell the people you need. We need a motor home. And if you need, if you know anybody that has an older one, because I don't have money for a new one. I do have some money. I have some skin in the game. But if somebody has one that they want to donate, that's even better. No, seri I'm serious. But I do have some skin in the game. I do have some money to work with. But if you know of anybody that has one, or if you have one, for that matter, you want to upgrade or get rid of it, let me know. Maybe God will bless me to take it off your hands because it'll be used for ministry. It'll be used for ministry. It'll be blessed. So, having said that, before I pray us out, do you have, uh, Hal uh, showed, the, he's got, we got an excellent book table here. The only book that I wrote personally was uh, that one, the flag and, uh, yeah, thanks, Hallie. Uh, morality, yeah, thanks, man. Morality and Freedom, America's Dynamic Duel. Also, Hallie, give me a copy of uh, Color Communism, Common Sense. You mentioned it, but just let me give the people a background of this. <clears throat> uh, this. This one I wrote in 2008, which talks about why it's so necessary in America to gain, to get moral, godly people in back in government. Because these wicked people that are running our government now at the state level, and the federal level is, 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 is a crying shame. We need righteous people in government, running government, for the simple reason that whoever is in government writes the laws, and wicked people write wicked laws, which means righteous people will write, write godly laws. The Bible says in Proverbs 29, 2, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bears rule, the people mourn. Well, how many of us would agree? We are mourning. <laughs> this mess is off the chain. We in a hot, double hot mess. We need righteous people running the government. If God has called some of you to run for office, go for it. God will bless you. So this is what I wrote this one myself in 2008. This one here, Hallie mentioned, Color Communism and Common Sense, a guy named Manning Johnson, he's dead and gone. This thing here was written in the late 50s. I, the only contribution I made to this one was I wrote the uh, forward, the preface. And basically this guy, Manning Johnson, he was a black uh, guy that was religious. He went to church every week, but all he saw was racism white racism in the church back in the 50s, he got disillusioned and listened to a black preacher who was a communist tell him that only the communists loved black folks, which was a lie. So this preacher who was a communist said, you need to start going with me to socialist meetings. He started to go with this guy to these meetings. And once he started going to these communist meetings, the communists said, oh, we like this guy. Let's send him to Moscow, to the Kremlin. 
and train him. How many of you heard the term, these Marxists and Black Lives Matter say, oh, we are trained Marxists. How many of you heard that? You know what that means? They have been trained by the communists in Russia. They are no joke. But the same wicked women who are witches and lesbians who were trained in Moscow to come back to destroy America who are black, they say that they hate private property and hate capitalism, yet at the same time, they took the money that they was getting that was supposed to help black folks because black lives matter, they say. And what did they do with the money? Bought houses. So communists buying mansions? That don't sound right. They took the money, bought real estate, high-end real estate, and then split. Black lives matter, they say. So they're not getting some of these people, these Marxist faces and say, you don't really believe in Black Lives Matter. Because if you really believed in Black Lives Matter, then why are you killing each other in the hood, all the day, every way? Why are you killing your babies like the scripture says, he, God hates those who shed innocent blood. Why are you sending your pregnant women to Planned Parenthood to have their babies ripped out of their stomach if black lives matter? Oh, black lives don't matter. You don't care nothing about no black people. You're just using that to make money. Black lives matter? Then why are you rioting? Why are you burning down your own black businesses if black lives matter? You're a lying wonder. Oh, they killed George Floyd. Oh, they killed Michael Brown. These cops, police brutality. We got to defund the police. Really? And then do what? When one black criminal comes to rape you, your wife, and blow your head off in a robbery? Or in a carjacking? Who you gonna call, a social worker? Not, it's pure nonsense. So what happened to Madden Johnson? He got over there in Moscow and quickly discovered that the commies don't care anything about black folks. They want to use black people because they know black folks have an attitude that goes all the way back to slavery. They want to use blacks as communists to beat the, to destroy America through a race war. That's the real deal. And if we don't stand up against this mess, that's what will happen. But I thank God that God has given enough of us, white, black, and brown, to stand against the tricks of the devil and tell Satan, you will not destroy America. You will not bring a race war to America where black folks and white folks are at each other's head. Because black people and white people of, of, of sound mind and love and good rapport will stand together against all the tricks of the devil. That's where you guys come in. That's why I need that motorhome. So that we can expand. So what happened? Once he figured out what the real deal was, that black folks were just being trained because of their unforgiveness and their anger and their bitterness to, uh, uh, because of slavery and Jim Crow, he quietly left Moscow when the two-year training was up came back to America, repented before God, and spilled the beans. That's where this book came from. Color, communism, and common sense. This whole racial narrative, this CRT nonsense, is nothing more or nothing less than a tool that was spawned in the pits of hell by the devil using communists, white and black communists, in order to have the people at each other's throats, in order to divide and conquer. There is nothing redemptive in it. And we are not ready to let Satan destroy people and bring a race war to America with this mess. 
So my closing remarks as we conclude is simply this. Get on your face before God. Take a knee to Jesus Christ and no, no man. And ask the Lord while you're in your prayer closet, on your knees, lifting your hands to heaven. Lord, what will you have me to do to bring forth peace and reconciliation between blacks and whites? Whites are fearful and blacks are angry. That's two uh, ingredients that were spawned in hell. Ask God. What did it have you to do? To bring healing and then get out and do it. Bob, I think you had a question. Oh, I yes. I'm bringing in women's hospital in Boston as they uh, in the name of racial equity, they're saying that they want to take care of people of color before white people if they come in. What do you think of that as a form of uh, reparations? Um, what do I think of, of, it, of what you just well, said? It's saying that That's a lie from hell. Number one, number one, it's, we talked about this all night, number one. Just in, it, there's so many situations. It's all the same mess, number one. Number two, Bob, you, meant, you used a, uh, a phrase. You said people of color. Let me correct that. I love you, Sally, but I'm going to correct that term. <laughs> Who is a person of color? I don't see no ghosts sitting out here. <laughs> Last time I looked, if you ain't a ghost, you got a color. Huh? Everybody is a person of color. Helen, you're a per per your person of color. You got a little red in you. And I'm not black, I'm brown. Some of you don't know that. This is black. And you ain't really white. So stop using these foolish, made up terms like people POC. People of color. That sounds so cute. Everybody is a person of color. Because if you ain't a person of color, that means you a ghost. Don't use that term. What about BIPOC? About what? BIPOC. What is that? Black, indigenous, people of color. <laughs> Look, Bob, I'm going to shut you down. <laughs> All right, let's close it off. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I'll take one more question because Bob, he'll keep me here all night. Anybody else other than Seal? <laughs> Okay, let's close out. You guys get anything out of this? Bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, I've given your people what I was called to give them. And we ask, Lord Jesus, that their spiritual eyes have been opened. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that our spiritual ears have been un unstopped. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that truth has pierced their hearts and that they are ready to obey you by getting in their own prayer closet and asking you, Lord, what will you have me to do? Father, we thank you for this precious group that is here tonight. And we thank you, Father, for their precious under shepherd, Pastor Sam. And we ask, Lord, that you will continue to bless this house, bless the work of his hands as he strives to build in his people boldness. Boldness. Boldness to stand against the workers of iniquity and the forces of hell that is trying to destroy America through destroying American citizens, be they white or black. Bless the work of his hands, Lord. Bless every soul in this house that has pressed their way out tonight to hear this presentation. We'll give you the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. You can come over here.